Good evening, everyone. I'm Venkatesh Potluri, and I have my colleague Priyan Vaitalingam here. We are from Microsoft Research India, and we are here to talk about our efforts around improving programming environment accessibility for visually impaired developers. Before I get into the actual challenge, let me give you some context. How do visually impaired developers write code? To answer this question, let me take a step back. Visually impaired people use computers with assistive technology software called screen readers. These screen readers, to put it simple, convert text that is displayed on screen or that is under the cursor focus into speech or braille. Visually impaired developers use these screen readers with IDEs or integrated development environments like Visual Studio and Eclipse to write code. Uh, let me actually, uh, but, but a lot of information that's conveyed by these IDEs is very visually intensive. Though these IDEs have accessibility features, a lot, uh, the visual information doesn't really translate very well into a screen reader experience. Let me quickly show you a video as to how a visually impaired developer would listen to code. What you're seeing is a Visual Studio window, and I'll just play the video, and what you will see is a screen reader uh, user navigating through code one line at a time. 11 using system send it. 12 using system dot collections dot generic send it. 13 using system dot diagnostics send it. 14 using system dot IO send it. 15 using system dot link send it. 16 using system dot media send it. 17 using system dot reflection send it. Yeah, so this is how a visually impaired developer would read code going through it one line at a time. Uh, from uh, my own experience and also from a preliminary survey, we actually understood the accessibility challenges faced by other visually impaired developers and okay. categorized them into these buckets. They are discoverability, alertability, navigability, and glanceability. We call them DANGs, right? I'll just explain each one of them with a Visual like Studio it. window as an example. So what you're looking at right now is a typical Visual Studio window that a developer would look at when they are working on programs, right? Um, Discoverability. This is the ability to discover IDE features and Im improve proficiency over time. Right? Uh, for instance, uh, one example that I can think of is Visual Studio has a feature that lets developers search for specific entities. As a matter of fact, none of us knew about it. Neither me nor few of my colleagues who had uh, a lot of experience using Visual Studio were aware of this feature until we bumped into it by accident. Alertability. This is the ability to proactively get visual information from the IDE, important information from the IDE. Uh, for instance, IDEs actually give a lot of uh, information through visual cues. Uh, errors are denoted by red squigglies. Navigability. This is the ability to quickly navigate through code. For instance, if you are sighted and if you are using a mouse, you can quickly scroll, point, and click to wherever you would like to go within the code. The next one is glanceability. This is the ability to get information at a glance. Just by looking at this screen, you're probably getting a lot of information. Scoping this to code, just by looking at the code, you can get a lot of information just through its visual representation. Right? Our answer to solve these accessibility challenges is Code Talk. It's a Visual Studio plugin, and I'll quickly show you a demo of, of a few ways in which Code Talk improves the experience for visually impaired developers. I'm just switching to a Visual Studio window. So what you're looking at is a Visual Studio window, and uh, I will actually demo this to you. So uh, I mean, I was working on this program before this presentation, and a lot of times the one question that developers face is to where am I in the code, right? Without Code Talk, I would have to go up one line at a time to get this information. But with Code Talk, I can get a quick context with respect to this particular line of code just with this key string. Binary search dash Microsoft Visual Studio window. Current context window. Functions list. If at line 22. So this is the, the line belongs to this if, if which line belongs to this uh, if block, line which, is, line which belongs to this while, if, while line uh, all the way to the top, right? Uh, getting context is that easy with Code Talk. <laughs> we also have uh, features right. which present an accessible code seven. summary to visually impaired developers. So it presents an accessible tree view which contains the structure of the code. Another experience that we are introducing with Code Talk is an audio debugging experience we call Talk Points. These are audio breakpoints, and you can configure them to do a number of things. You can have them play specific tones, you can have them announce specific messages, or you can even have them announce values of specific variables in the execution context. 
Let me quickly show you how uh, talk points improve the experience, uh, debugging experience for visually impaired developers. Actually, a lot of uh, visually impaired developers use printf debugging uh, to debug code. This is not only very inefficient, but it also uh, raises other security concerns while debugging code using printf statements and so on. So let me quickly show you a demo. I, in the interest of time, I've placed the talk points that are required for this demo. What we have here is a binary search program, and which is a list of numbers, and you can search for a number within the list. Let me run this. See, call it back. Okay, let me search for four. Four, four. Entered loop. Lower is zero, upper is five, mid is two. So what you listen to is code right. talk actually announcing you the values of lower, mid, and upper variables in the execution context. Let me go one more step. Nine is greater than four. Updating upper to one. Again, this is code talk actually announcing you the values in this particular iteration uh, of the loop in the execution context. With this kind of information available, visually impaired debuggers can, uh, visually impaired programmers can now debug just like any other sighted developer. Right. I would just like to talk about how uh, uh, my experience in using Code Talk. So actually, I was using Code Talk to build more features of Code Talk. Right. First, we actually had the code summary and the functions list uh, features, and this has been very helpful for me to understand the code uh, that my other colleagues have written and so on, and build more features uh, for Code Talk. We also have features. Uh, next, we implemented the get context feature and the error list, uh, error list, and the interactive uh, proactive alerts feature. So, what happens with this is um, until this, these features were available, the only way for me to actually uh, know that there was a syntax error in the code was to build, check for errors, go back to the code, fix them, and build the code again. I had to follow this cycle to fix all the errors. But with Code Talk's features, we, I really did not have to do this anymore, and I could fix errors as they occurred. All Code Talk does is place a beep uh, when there's an error, and there, uh, we also have features which show error lists, I mean, list of errors that are in the particular code file. I, I just My want to talk act. about how we went about designing Code Talk. We wanted Code Talk to be IDE agnostic, screen reader agnostic, and language agnostic. So Code Talk has three major components. One is the Code Talk core, one is the IDE interface, and the other is the language interface. The IDE interface is responsible for the operations with the IDE. So all you need to add support for a new IDE is a few APIs from the IDE and implementing this interface. Similarly, the language interface is responsible or helps in the programming language specific features. So all you need to add support for a new language is a few APIs with regards to the language in question and implementing the language interface. So adding support for new IDEs and languages with Code Talk is that simple. We've also done an exploratory user study and my colleague Priyan will walk you through the rest of the details. MBTA, exodex, exodex, get apps. Uh, thank you, Ankesh. Venkatesh really had a uh, great time using Code Talk, but uh, we wanted to know how Code Talk performed uh, out in the real world. Right? So we did an exploratory user study uh, where we got, got six participants from five different countries from the world. Most of them, uh, all of them had programming experience. Two of them even had, uh, had more than a decade of programming experience. So the user study uh, mainly considered of uh, participants performing tasks without and with Code Talk, and then they had to answer a few follow-up questions like, how was your experience doing these two phases? Was there any more information you wanted to have? And uh, how often do you encounter these tasks in your day-to-day -day programming activity? And then they were told to rate the usefulness of Code Talk from uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most useful. And they were also allowed to uh, give subjective comments on how to improve the tool. Right? Uh, so the tasks were uh, general in day-to-day uh, -day related programming activities like what's on my screen, the structure of the code, where am I on the code? How, to, how do I find errors and fix it? Uh, how generally, how do I debug, right? Especially task five, uh, it's a very uh, simple task where they had to uh, give a va value of a variable in a simple loop uh, in the iteration i, right? Without modifying the code because we wanted to see how they debug without when they're not doing print of debugging. Uh, so I would like to show you one, one of the participants' experience of debugging task five without code talk. <coughs> So uh, as usual, the participant goes uh, to the concern line and inserts a breakpoint, right? Uh, by the way, the, the video is sped up 14 and 32x in the interest of time. Uh, he starts the program and tries to figure out the value. In the, uh, in the process, he does some accidental edits, and Visual Studio does, doesn't say anything to him. 
can you press control Z, you modify the code? Yes, we manually interrupt and tell him, hey, you uh, have modified the code, can you undo the code so that you can continue one running one the code? And uh, yeah. now again, he continues the process of finding the value. Yes, he continues finding the process of the value, and uh, the answer we are expecting will be in the screen 1970, right? Around 30 minutes, 43 seconds. Uh, like we have the answer in the screen already, but to uh, to find that answer which is already visible to us, uh, he goes through a numerous process of a 13 minute long process of finding it over a million menus and million submenus, right? And this is not just uh, related to Visual Studio. This is every single ID out there, right? He's going to menus and he's going to submenus, figuring out, oh, where can I find that value which is already available to a sighted user. Finally finds the value after 13 long minutes. Yeah, autos. 1970? Yes, yes. What the yes. hell, oh my god. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's the experience without Kotok. The same participant for the same task, slightly different. So he, here he had to give the value of the vari uh, variable in the sixth iteration uh, with Kotok. This is in real time. It's not being sped up. He goes to the concern line, inserts a talk point, tells a talk point, hey, read me the value sum every time you break. He creates the talk point. He builds the code and runs the code. Iteration one, two, three, four, five, and six, and there it is. He's done. So you can see how a simply, simply to get a value of a variable from a simple for loop took 13 minutes without code talk and under a, under a minute with code talk. So we told the participants to uh, rate. Uh, every fe I mean features of code talk. Uh, we got an uh, rating from 3 .3, uh, 8.3 to 8.83 uh, on, sc on a scale of 10, where 10 being most useful. Uh, so here are some some very important quotes which we got during our user study. So one of the users told, "Hey, I have difficulty sorting through the code. Perhaps it's due to my vision impairment and not really an accessible issue." So the users are blaming themselves for the inaccessibility of the tool. There's something clearly going wrong. And then like one of the users told, I have no idea cited, cited users got so much information and screen readers are not reading it out, right? And uh, uh, after they use Kotok, here are the uh, few of the comments, right? Using this code summary feature requires me not to move away from the IDs, going through panes and menus. The information is right there in my fingertip. And this is definitely useful for situations where I have to take a look at other people's code, which happens in every major organization right now. Right. So, uh, what are the next steps for Code Talk? So, we have we haven't tackled the problem of discoverability yet, where uh, we have to identify features which are more efficient to a particular task. We would like to do that. And what are the correct metrics to evaluate systems like Code Talk? Sure, we have measured time and we saw an improvement in time, but do we measure time? Do we compare keystrokes? Do we compare the efficiency with site uh, with other sighted developers? Not clear yet. We would like to uh, find out and figure out uh, correct metrics to evaluate systems like Code Talk. Do perform a formal st user study where we cover a more diverse uh, users or, and more number of users, and also perform user studies with novice programmers where uh, we can understand how does Code Talk uh, help learning to program, right? And we also uh, want to uh, extend the envelope, uh, envelope of Code Talk where we have accessible ways to represent performance analysis graphs and code diff and other things so that we can give them a holistic tool for programming, program development. Uh, so in conclusion, we categorized accessibility challenges into discoverability, alertability, navigability, and glanceability, which, helps to, which helped us systematically to solve the problems uh, by developing code talk for Visual Studio. Eclipse support is coming soon, and sub, which uh, supports C-sharp and Python language. Java and other language supports coming soon. Uh, do you, when, when we did our user study, most of the participants' first question was, Hey, uh, after finishing the user study was, hey, when can I use this tool, right? Uh, how can I uh, edit this tool to add more features and make it my own? So uh, we wanted Code Talk to be a framework for future ID accessibility research. So we worked hard for open sourcing the code. It's already out there uh, in github.com slash Microsoft slash Code Talk. And there are, I'm very happy to say there are two more research projects in Microsoft Research India, which are building on top of Code Talk for ID accessibility research again. For more details, you can visit is it aka.ms slash code talk. Uh, thank you very much.
I'm going to bend over here. Hi, John Fraylick, University of Washington. Great talk, great work. Um, just really quickly, I was wondering if Venkatesh could comment on what he perceives to be the biggest barriers in programming and how Code Talk addressed those barriers. Yeah, so the biggest barrier in programming, I feel, uh, I mean, again, I'm coming from an experienced programmer perspective where I may have crossed some of these barriers, is to use the tools that everybody else is using and be just as efficient as uh, other-sided programmers, right? When you're, let's say, working in a big organization and you're working on projects which have gigabytes of source code, right? That That is, to me, is the biggest barrier. And I think adding more features to Code Talk, right? More, uh, for instance, the performance analysis kind of stuff, uh, and even seeing if Code Talk really helps in this kind of scenarios would be really interesting. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. And a quick follow-up. Since yeah. you guys open source this, have you seen some adoption and have you heard from the user community? Uh, yes, uh, we do have some unofficial numbers. So there are already 128 users installed who have installed code talk but we don't have the formal numbers yet uh, we don't uh, due to some uh, privacy concerns we couldn't really have telemetry in our tool so yeah Good. hello uh, Jean de Donc speaking from UCL Belgium congratulations for the work being done Thank actually you. instead of visual studio you should name it talking studio right <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was wondering to what extent I can use code talk uh, in order to develop accessible user interface and, for instance, exploiting the vocal modality for documenting my code, commenting my code, or producing accessible resources in Windows. Right. Uh, yeah. uh, so if I get your question, you are asking us if you can use Code Talk to do all these. Am I correct? That's right. Uh, currently, no, because we were more focusing on the programming tasks that the developers were doing. But yes, since it's open source, there's definitely possibilities to do all these as well. Uh -huh. Okay, thanks. <laughs> what happened? Hi, thanks for an interesting talk. Uh, uh, my name is Osama Mtatlan from the University of Bristol. I'm just wondering what um, your thoughts, uh, uh, whether you see value in using uh, non-speech sounds in addition to speech output in your, in your system? And if so, where, where do you think it would be most useful to have? Yes, uh, so we are actually using non-speech sounds. For instance, uh, we have a feature which basically gives you a non-speech cue when you have a syntax error in your code. So when you're typing away, it just gives you a hint saying, hey, something is wrong. And then you can use uh, the code talks error list feature to actually get a list of the errors that are there in the code. Also, with uh, when, when we are debugging with talk points, one kind of a talk point we have is non-speech audio, wherein uh, we believe it helps in situations like sometimes you're interested in whether your code is in the try block or a catch block. You just are interested in the execution context. So you can actually insert these talk points, listen to these tones, and then uh, get a sense of how your code is being run. Uh, there is non-speech audio support already for talk points and errors. Uh, you can you can try it out. Uh, there's already uh, support for that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Let's